Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, January 14th, 2025 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, let's start out with some honeypot logs uh, today. We got an increase in requests for a password reset URL that's associated with Hikvision IP cameras. Of course, Hikvision has been often attacked. This is not a new vulnerability. First mention I found was in 2018, a blog post by Rasmus Muratz. And what Rasmus did identify here was not just that the password reset feature didn't have a rate limit implemented, but also that the code it used for password reset was predictable. The idea behind the feature isn't sort of that unusual and not necessarily bad, where the user is receiving a one-time reset code that they can then use to reset their password. Of course, that code should only be sent to an existing email address, uh, maybe an SMS or something like that. It should be random. It should be brute forceable and it should be limited for a short uh, time frame. Well, uh, Hikvision managed to violate most of these. Rasmussen started out uh, with a simple brute force idea and that worked. There was no rate limit implemented. Apparently, there was also no real sort of time limit uh, implemented, which uh, made it relatively straightforward to brute force uh, the code. But um, in addition to that, the code itself wasn't random. It was derived from UPnP data that actually can be retrieved without authentication. So that made it pretty straightforward to bypass the authentication for the password reset, which in turn then allows the attacker to reset the password for the administrator. The lesson learned here is not so much that, well, IP cameras are vulnerable. We knew that a long time. But if you are implementing password reset like this, make sure to use random codes. Make sure that you are limiting the number of attempts and also the time over which a code can be used. And of course, be always aware of the denial of service issue here. Uh, with uh, password resets, uh, if you're locking accounts and the, the defense here usually is the password reset question, and that really should be the only purpose of the password reset question is sort of a, a rate limit. It shouldn't allow you to then directly reset your password. And Microsoft published a good analysis of a recent Mac OS vulnerability CVE 2024-4424. Three, this vulnerability allows a bypass of the System Integrity Protection, or SIP. Now, in order uh, to exploit the vulnerability, the victim has to be tricked into installing a malicious kernel extension. Of course, they are sometimes installed as part of other software. So it really comes down to getting the victim to install the kernel extension. SIP is supposed to prevent a more pervasive uh, software or malware from being installed by protecting sort of the core of the operating system better that even an administrator can't really make changes to it. I've enabled it on my systems. Sometimes a little bit of more painful uh, security feature. If you do update some software, you have to reboot the system, disable SIP, then reboot again and then enable it again. So uh, it's not a necessarily straightforward process to legitimately install the software uh, once a SIP is installed, at least if the software does require uh, the ability to make kernel changes. But due to this vulnerability, malware can now install additional uh, features and uh, be more persistent, harder to detect by bypassing SIP and in the end actually then taking advantage of SIP because once it bypassed it, it's now basically gaining the same protection that normal software gains from a SIP. But it's not just Apple that has to fight rootkits. Actually, rootkits originally, I think, uh, came from Linux. So that's why they are called uh, rootkits. 
Fortinet has a good write-up of uh, various uh, techniques that are currently uh, being used by more sophisticated uh, Linux rootkits, in particular various Saturday vulnerabilities that they are taking advantage for. Of uh, I actually link to a story at cybersecuritynews.com. Couldn't find the original Fortinet uh, article uh, that they published. So I'm relying here on what uh, cybersecuritynews.com has uh, covered. And they have a pretty good uh, breakdown of how the attacks work, uh, how some of uh, the then post-attack uh, payloads look like. If you're managing Linux systems, certainly something to pay attention to and to look if there are any sort of indicators of compromise or uh, any particular techniques uh, that you need to be able uh, to detect. Patching, of course, is an important part here. But I think the main focus of this particular uh, post is sort of how to detect a system, how to detect compromise, uh, because sometimes, well, there you don't have a patch yet available for these vulnerabilities. And finally, interesting development here that Halkion, if you're pronouncing that uh, like this, uh, points out about AWS S3 buckets. And for a change, it's not leaks in S3 buckets, but instead a ransomware. Quite a while ago, AWS has started to encrypt all data in S3 by default. Now, typically, the encryption key is managed by AWS. And with that, of course, AWS in charge of backing them up and managing them. But the customers have the ability to bring their own encryption keys. They're usually referred to as SSE-C, C for customer. Well, a ransomware is now taking advantage of this feature and loading their own encryption keys. The problem with that is once they're loaded, they're not recoverable. The data is encrypted. And unless you actually have access uh, to the encryption key, well, uh, the data is lost to you. There's nothing that AWS can do to help you. And that's kind of the reason why these customer provided keys exist. If you don't trust AWS, well, you can encrypt the data yourself. The root cause of this problem is that attackers gain access to credentials that allow them to then upload these keys. So exposed AWS access keys are typically being used to then install these encryption keys. Well, that's it for today. Remember, Microsoft Patch Tuesday tomorrow. That's it. And talk to you again tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.